What up, cucks? It's time for that daily video with keeping the streak going, motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? We don't fuck around here, you know? I said I'm gonna make a video every day, and here we are, at least one video every day, motherfuckers. We're taking this seriously. So there you go. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about today's topic, cucks. All right, we're gonna talk about how WWE, uh, when they fire people, they always ruin them. You understand what I'm saying? Every person that WWE ever fires is someone that WWE has ruined. These people were always great. WWE took them and then they are ruined, right? Now, I say this because that's the story of every single wrestler out there. I believe that this is not a coincidence, right? Now, some of you may be thinking, Hater, are you saying that it's actually true? That WWE ruins wrestlers? No, motherfucks. What I'm saying is this. There is a reason why wrestlers, when they leave WWE, they always say things like, WWE helped me back, WWE ruined me, and all this garbage, right? And the reason is because they have nothing else going for them. That's the reason, all right? The reason why everyone's gimmick, once they get fired from WWE, is WWE helped me back, or a facsimile thereof, is because they have nothing else to offer, right? Now, there are a few wrestlers in WWE, right, that have gimmicks. Not that many, but there are a few. If you have a gimmick, you can take that gimmick and take it elsewhere, and that can be your thing. You know, I'm here because I'm the Velveteen Dream, let's say, and I'm here in Impact Wrestling because I'm flamboyant, and my flamboyance led me to uh, Impact, right? You could do something like that, and that's not a great example, but you understand what I'm saying, right? Or if you're really special, you can do what Elijah Burke did and go somewhere else and just reinvent yourself, right? Be like, this is my new gimmick. This is how I roll, motherfucks. This doesn't really happen that often. Wrestlers, when they leave WWE, see my other video about this when I, when I was talking about options, right? Doesn't happen very often. When wrestlers leave WWE, they understand that there is some stock and some value in that, and they can just take that and go, and go from there, right? Now, here's the thing. A lot of people have recently been released. Recently meaning this whole coronavirus thing. It's going to be interesting to see how these people react to the fact that they've been released. We've already seen a few of them pop up in TNA, motherfucks. You know what I'm saying? We've, before that, we've seen quite a few of them pop up in AEW. You know what I mean? So their character is almost always the same, right? Let's start talking about the Dean Ambrose stupid ass, like, vignettes that they aired where it's like two big dogs, right? Like the big dog, Roman Reigns, I'm not the big dog, right? And then all this kind of shit that led up to his debut at the whatever poker theme pay-per-view, whatever the fuck it was, like All In or whatever, Fold Your Hand or whatever the fuck it's called, right? When he debuted, the entire premise around him was WWE didn't know how to use me, but now I have creative control. Now I am that person. I can do what I want. Same thing with Matt Hardy, right? These wrestlers have not paid off. The fact that they signed Matt Hardy already feels inconsequential. He's managing like Private Party or some other horseshit like that. It feels useless and inconsequential. The fact that they signed Matt Hardy means nothing. He had his one week of relevance and it meant nothing. Dean Ambrose, they made him champion, but it's the same shit. He's like, this is what I call a paradigm shift. Now forgive me, motherfucks. Forgive me when I ask the question, what paradigm shift? What shifted? What was this paradigm before? And what, what is this paradigm now? Because it sure as shit seems to me like he's the same motherfucker. As a matter of fact, he's growing his hair out to, to mimic his haircut back when he was a jobber in WWE. Matt Hardy, same thing. All he's done is rehash things he's already done in WWE. Forgive me, motherfucks, but when Matt Hardy comes and just says, now I am Matt Hardy from the 90s, Matt Hardy from the 2000s, I'm Matt Hardy from this, I'm broken Matt Hardy, I'm up my own ass Matt Hardy. These are all things that he's already done in WWE. But even with Matt Hardy, the implicit premise is that he was being held back. That was the point of his little vignettes on his channel, right? It was, 
oh, my creative freedom is being held down. So Zenith must come out. All this stupid jokes. Damascus must come out. Same shit, right? The same thing can be seen now from all these people that have left and, uh, and are of joint TNA. Not all of them yet. I'm sure it'll get there, right? I'm sure Heath Slater will have his moment of, I've been held down. And maybe Eric Young will have his moment. And if anyone deserves it, it's Eric Young because he at least ha has been successful in TNA. He's a TNA original. It means something else. He can be like, I'm home, you know? But everyone else, EC3, uh, Gallows and Anderson, these types of people, their entire character now is, they helped me back. Nobody knew how to use me. Believe me, I'm good. But don't believe all the, the indicators and all your senses that suggest that I suck ass. Believe me, though. Believe Carl Anderson when Carl Anderson says, I'm the best wrestler in the world, and Luke Gallows is the best big man in the world. Are you fucking insane? Luke Gallows is better than Keith Lee? Are you, you fucking lost your mind? Name one way that he's better than Keith Lee. You know? Name one way that he's better than even Kane is now, or Big Show, or Drew McIntyre, if you want to call him a big man. He's about the same size, motherfucks. You know, is he better than Lashley? No, he's not. That's why he's fired, right? Same thing with Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson has been a jobber everywhere he's been, and somehow, despite the fact that he's never had any kind of single success in his entire career, he goes out there and he says, I'm the best wrestler in the world. This happens a lot when people leave WWE. They get this gimmick of I'm the best wrestler in the world and it's just WWE that held me down. Think about how foolish that is. When you have 15 wrestlers, all of which have been jobbers in WWE, they get fired and then they're like, I'm the best wrestler. I should have been the next John Cena. I'm Carl Anderson. You know what I'm saying? Now, I will say the truth. I always say it like it is. I like Carl Anderson. You know, considering what he is, I like Carl Anderson. He's got a good build to him. Like, he's not a heavyweight, but he's got a good build to him, right? He has a presence. You know, he has some sort of presence-driven charisma. Not very high, but he's got something there. Like, like Carl Anderson could easily replace Ricochet, and I think he's better than Ricochet. He could easily replace Mustafa Ali, and I think he's better than Mustafa Ali, right? However... Carl Anderson, I remember I saw this interview. He was like, I'd like to have a match with Randy Orton because we're about the same age. Like, that's his justification. They're about the same age, and they both use the cutter as their finisher. But you forget that Randy Orton is the youngest ever WWE champion, or whatever, world heavyweight champion, right? He is Randy Orton. You're Carl Anderson. When Randy Orton was wrestling Undertaker and burning him alive in a coffin... Carl Anderson was out there jobbing to, like, Tanahashi or some other jobber, some other 5'8", like, 175-pound jobber, right? And then he's like, I'm the best wrestler in the world. And I was looking at comments because I saw, like, um, their debut in TNA. I saw it on YouTube. Their theme is awesome. I like their theme, right? And all these people, all these neckbeards in the comments were like, WWE really helped Carl Anderson back. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's this, this one asshole, he was like, he was like, Carl Anderson was a single star in New Japan. Now, I'm not going to sit here and claim that I've watched every New Japan show. But I know enough to know that Carl Anderson was like the third or fourth guy in Bullet Club. At all given moments, he was the third or fourth guy. There was a time when he was the de facto leader because he was the best one on the mic. The best one there on the mic. And that's not, that's not really like a hard push because he's competing with people like Bad Luck Fale and Tama Tonga. These two like, these two people that should never have a mic in their hands, right? So that's why he's the leader. He was never presented as like their main guy, right? It's all, it was AJ Styles, it was Finn Balor, it was Kenny Omega. So behind all these motherfucks, right? Including Evil now, right? And Jay White. Behind all these fucks, you have Carl Anderson. And despite the fact that even in his own faction that he started with Finn Balor and Bad Luck Fale, despite the fact that even in that faction he was not the number one guy, he comes out and he's like, I'm the best wrestler in the world. Do you see what I'm saying, motherfucks? This is a problem. Everyone who leaves WWE and gets fired from them, they have the same story. I was great, they helped me back. Do you have any evidence as to why you are great? This is what I ask people all the time. I do the same thing when people talk about Killer Cross, right? And some people, I think it was Liverbird, correct me if I'm wrong, motherfucks, 
But Liverbird, he said, he's like, oh, he reminds me of Edge. And I'm like, all right, I kind of see what you're saying. That, like, maniacalness, right? But beyond that, no one had any arguments. It's the same exact thing. It's like, why is Karrion Cross better than Carl Anderson? You know, name one thing. Why is he better, you know? Is he a better wrestler? No, I don't think he is, right? Is he, like, he's bigger, I guess, but he's not this, like, giant or anything like that, right? He's not Batista, let's be honest, right? So it's like, he's not bigger than, 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 than Luke Gallows, you know? Why is he a better wrestler than Luke Gallows? Because he makes an angry face, you know what I'm saying? What is it about him? What is it about Carl Anderson? What is it about Heath Slater? What is it about EC3 where they can justifiably say, I was held down? I was actually good, but I was held down. There's been a few examples like that, for sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. There have been people that have been systemically held down by WWE and have gone elsewhere and have had success. Someone like Booker T, you could argue, even though he was a champion in WWE. When Triple H came back, they had him drop the Triple H and it was like, what the fuck? Could Triple H beat like Shelton Benjamin or some, or some mid-carder? What does he have to beat Booker T, you know? So that's an argument, right? Christian Cage, that's an argument. He was someone that was held back. He was way over, he's great in the ring, good at everything he does, and he was held back because there were other people that were ahead of him in line, right? Another example, perfect example, Rhino, right? Rhino during his original run, Rhino was a beast. Rhino should have been like uh, an upper mid-carder, right? But he wasn't. In TNA, he became an upper mid-carder. He reached his potential. And he didn't say one time, I've been held down. Dudley Boys, perfect example, you know? Obviously, one of the most decorated tag teams in WWE history. But for a while, <coughs> they were being made to job to like Rene Dupree and Sylvain Grenier. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when you see that, you're like, oh, hold on a second. These are the Dudley boys. Like, they've been destroying teams for like 10 years now, only for them to lose to like Lance Storm and Val Venus, like an impromptu tag team of Maven and D'Lo Brown. You know what I'm saying? Like, that kind of horseshit, right? So it's like, oh, wait a second. I am being held back because... Look at my resume. Look at the, all the moments that the Dudley Boys have given us, right? Look at all the awesome matches. I don't just mean the TLC matches, but like the tables match against the Hardys at Royal Rumble, right? Uh, their 2-on-1 tag team match, uh, I mean 2-on-1 handicap match against Big Show. Their mini feud with the Rock and Saw connection. They're continuously putting people like The Rock through tables. Destroying, putting all these women through tables, right? Putting Mae Young through a table. These memorable moments. You know, that, then the Dudley Boys can be like, well, wait a second, we've created all these memorable moments only to job to Rene Dupree and Rob Conway? Are you fucking kidding me? That's retarded. I understand jobbing to them once or twice, but what the fuck? Like, Rene Dupree and Rob Conway are the tag team champions? Are they, are they really a better team for them to be champions for so long? Absolutely not, right? But what similar things can any of these cocksuckers point to, right? What can Heath Slater say that he has done? What can Gallows and Anderson say that they have accomplished in WWE, or honestly, anywhere else, right? What can they say? You know, what the fuck can EC3 say? I came to NXT, I had a, the, one of the most uneventful runs in the history of NXT, I jobbed out to the far better Delta Team Dream, and then I was on my way out. I was like, oh, I'm pissed off now. I'm gonna throw a glass at the wall. This is the real me. That's another thing. This is the real me. Now you're gonna see the real me. WWE didn't let me be the real me. Now you're gonna see the real me. But guess what, mother fucks? The real you also sucks. The real Dean Ambrose, that they call John Moxley, is the same shit. He also sucks ass. That's the problem, mother fucks. None of these people are willing to go and reinvent themselves. They're completely content by just having the same gimmick of, we're the best tag team in the world. Wait a second, I thought FTR also claimed the exact same thing. So how the fuck do I know which tag team is better? Is it FTR or is it the Good Brothers? Which one of the teams is better, mother fucks? Which one of these two motherfuckers is the better team? They both say the same thing. They're like, WWE, we didn't achieve much there. And they fired us, basically. Or, or we didn't sign with them because we were going to be jobbers. Right? But, but despite that, we're the best. So how the fuck do I know which one's better than who? None of these claims are substantiated by reality, motherfucks. The FDR goes out there, botches their move 15 times in a row in AEW, and people are like, oh, I see now why WWE wanted to fire them. Same thing with Gals and Anderson. Paul, you know, like, Paul Heyman said this and that. Who the fuck cares? You're not interesting enough. You know? And another thing about these motherfuckers, about these tag teams especially, right? What the fuck do they want? Gals and Anderson were given opportunities. They became tag team champions, I think twice, right? They, quote unquote, ended the Dudley Boys' career in WWE, you know? They, they were given opportunities, and they're like, we were held back. What the fuck did you want? You know, you became tag team champions. 
You've reached the height of the tag team division. What do you want? You want to become the next Hardy Boys? Sorry, you're not good enough, motherfucks. You want to be the next Dudley Boys? You sure as shit aren't good enough. What do you want to be? You know, you were a placeholder tag team, and when they were when they debuted, they were presented as one of the best tag teams in the world. But the idea is now being one of the best tag teams in the world. Now you're in WWE. Now you actually have to wrestle the real best tag teams. And sorry, you're not better than Big E and Xavier Woods, let's say, right? I mean, I think they are better than the New Day, but you know what I mean, right? Then you're not good enough, fam. But I don't know what they want. I don't know what FTR and the Good Brothers want. What do they want? Do they want to go there and, and like become a tag team for five months and then Carl Anderson becomes the world heavyweight or the universal champion and Gallows becomes a WWE champion? Is that what they thought was going to happen? No, motherfucks. You were being brought here specifically to bolster the tag team division. And primarily, in my opinion, you were brought here just so they could eventually have a thing with you and AJ Styles. That's it. Nobody give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Nobody cares. Same shit. Like, all these people come out here, they're like, I was held back because I didn't get, I didn't make it at WrestleMania, therefore WWE held me back. What the fuck are you talking about? Only one person, right, like usually only one new person gets the main event WrestleMania. It's always going to be like a veteran, like the guy who's already established the champion, right? I guess usually a new guy or a newish guy, right? It's not going to be Carl Anderson versus a Lesnar at WrestleMania. That's retarded. It's not going to be Heath Slater at WrestleMania. It's not going to be Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania. You're not a WrestleMania guy. You weren't brought in here to become the, the face of the company. That's the problem. Like people like Roman Reigns clearly are brought in to become the face of the company. I don't have to explain why. You look at Roman Reigns, you're like, that could be the face of the company. You look at Dean Ambrose and you're like, that could be the next Steve Blackman. But Dean Ambrose is like, oh, they didn't make me the next Rock. Oh, they held me back. I'm better than that. No, you're not better than that. Why are you better than that? Explain to me at least, right? Explain to me why you're good enough. And that's the problem. The narrative that WWE ruins these people is ridiculous. The much more reasonable, the Occam's razor explanation to this phenomenon is that none of these people were ever good enough. WWE just pointed out they weren't good enough. They did not like the, the, the result. They left the company or, or were fired. And now their, their whole thing is, their whole gimmick is, I'm going to bitch and moan about how WWE held me back. No, you cannot put yourself over like that because everyone's doing that. It's cool if one person does it. Primarily, it's cool if, like, let's say CM Punk. If CM Punk debuted in AW, okay, fine. You can make that argument. Or Jericho. You can make that argument and be like, dude, I was the best one. They helped me back. I should have gotten the shot. Or if Daniel Bryan were to leave. Or if John Cena were to leave, let's say. right? These wrestlers can say, wait a second, I'm John Cena, right? It would be like Hulk Hogan going to WCW if John Cena went to AEW, right? And, and John Cena can be like, oh, 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 I'm John Cena, motherfucks. The wrestling world revolves around me. I should have absolutely no problem beating up Luchasaurus. You know, I'm the WWE champion. I am like one of the most decorated wrestlers of all time. That's the idea right here, right? But all these people, they're not that good. But they continue to believe or I guess propose to us that they are that good. The fact that Carl Anderson is so disillusioned that he thinks that he should be in a one-on-one -on -one feud against Randy Orton. Right? Which is like, Randy Orton is, a, is approaching like Undertaker-ish levels. You understand what I'm saying? He's approaching that level of like, of magnitude, right? Where it's like, yo, it should be, like the Randy Orton match at WrestleMania should be an honor if, you, if you're wrestling Randy Orton. Because you're going to put on a good match, it's going to be memorable, and it's likely going to be for a title or it's going to mean something. Right? A lot of people have had to go through Randy Orton at WrestleMania to kind of be established. Like, I would consider one of Kane's career hi highlights to be when he beat uh, I think he beat either Randy Orton or CM Punk, right? That's a career highlight at WrestleMania. It's like, dude, holy shit. Kane just beat like the guy that was champion or that's going to be champion. Kane is established once again. You know what I'm saying? That's the career. Like, Big Show, like, Cody Rhodes beating Big Show is a big deal. Big Show beating Cody Rhodes is no one gives a fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's like, of course he's going to beat Cody Rhodes. Look at Big Show. Look at Cody Rhodes. Look at their resumes. You know what I'm saying? That's the idea. And, and speaking of cocky Rhodes, he's one of them too. He's one of these assholes who comes out and he's like, they held me back. I'm Dusty's son, they held me back. Dusty is my father. I'm the American Nightmare. Me, the company should, should revolve around me because I'm better. Me, I'm gonna complain. Me, me, me. Shut up, you fucking loser. Be quiet. Be lucky that you're getting paid fat dollars to be in WWE. Same thing with Gals and Anderson. You know, like, like you can't simultaneously be like, oh, I did it for the money, and then be like, they didn't book me right. Fuck you. They paid you a lot of money 
so you can shut the fuck up. You know, so you can you you're making the money that some main eventers are making, I'm sure, right? But you're not a main eventer. We will use you when we need you. But the idea is like you should need me. I'm Carl Anderson. I'm Luke Gallows. Considering the fact, like that asshole in, in the comments, oh, Carl Anderson was a single star. Who has Carl? Let me look it up right now, motherfucks. Let me look up how many singles titles that cocksucker Carl Anderson, who I actually like. I I even hate to talk about him this this. This poorly because I like Carl Anderson, but I don't like this this attitude. Let's see how many titles, uh, championships, and accomplishments, motherfucks. New Japan Pro Wrestling, absolutely not one singles title. This guy is a tag team champion. He is a four time IWGP tag team champion. He is a, I, I repeat, motherfucks. He is a four time W I mean uh, IWGP tag team champion, and he was he was there for like 10, 15 years. He was in WWE for like three or four years, and he became a two-time tag team champion. So how the fuck is this an imbalance? And how the fuck was he a single star? New Japan has like 15,000 singles titles now. None of them have ever been held by Carl Anderson. Let's look at that other asshole, Doc Gallows, or Luke Gallows, whatever the fuck he calls himself now. Let's see here. Championships and accomplishments. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Three-time tag team champion with Carl Anderson. That's it. That's all this guy's accomplished. So for him to be the best big man, why is he the best big man? Because he beat Hiroki Goto in some meaningless tag team match? No, motherfuckers. No. This guy and Carl Anderson have always been like middle of the pack guys in their groups, in their tag teams, in their divisions, in their companies. So for all of a sudden now, they're like, oh, I'm a champion. I'm actually really good. It would be like Mike Knox. Remember Mike Knox? It'd be like him coming back to WWE or him going to like, I don't know, AW being like, I'm Mike Knox. I'm one of the greatest ECW wrestlers ever. No, you're not, Mike Knox. You suck. You know, so that's what I got to say about that, motherfucks. That's what I got to say about all these pussy ass. Not that the wrestlers are pussies, but I understand what they're doing. They're doing it to, like, put themselves over. But it is a stupid ass way to put yourself over. And as a result, there is zero chance that Carl Anderson or Doc Gallows will become single stars in TNA. No way, motherfucks. No way.